Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Adulthood. Today, we are tackling house plants. If any of you guys keep up with me on social media, you may or may not have seen all of the plants that I have unfortunately um, <clears throat> killed. And behind me, you may see some succulents and those are definitely very fake and very plastic. All this to say, I am so excited to dive in, learn what I'm doing wrong, and how I can actually effectively take care of houseplants. We're gonna be hanging out with my friend Sterling and our expert, Hannah Westby, who will be guiding us on our journey to be the houseplant experts we know deep down inside we can all be. Let's get started. We're gonna be heading over this way. I'm so excited. I am too. All right, I'll take you guys down to my room. I'm so excited. I don't have any plants, so this is gonna be very exciting. We have the right person today to help us out with that. We'll just walk on in here. Nice. This is my room. I love it. Your place Good has lighting. such a great aesthetic. Okay, Sterling, do you have any experience at all with plants? Not really, honestly. I love the idea of plants and I really want to make it more lively in here, but as far as me taking care of plants, I don't really know where to start. Every time I try, they end up dying, and so I don't really know when to water them or anything. Well, that's why we have Hannah, because she is an expert on everything plants and keeping them alive. Thank you. Well, you're, you guys aren't alone. Everybody, I feel like everyone I know, in the beginning, they kill all the plants that they get because <laughs> it does, it takes practice and it takes learning a routine to really understand them. So the first tip that I have is just to evaluate the light that you have in here. You have a pretty good amount of light. You have a good window over here that lets in a lot of light. I love this wall. I see a lot of <laughs> plant potential here. This shelf looks great. I feel like we could put some cute plants here. Maybe like a bigger one right over here, taller. Oh yeah, that would be so cute. So now that we kind of have an idea of where we want them to be, I guess we'll head over to a nursery, check Perfect. it out. You can guide us, let us know yes. what the best plants are gonna be for this space. All right, hey, yeah, let's get going. Let's, let's go. Oh my gosh. So pretty. This place is so cute. Okay, so that is a split leaf monstera and these are really hard to find and they're also like one of my favorite plants. This will be perfect for the bigger plant that we're thinking because these do really well in like medium light so we should definitely get one of these. Okay. So what's our mission again? What are we here to find? Okay so I think we want to find a bigger plant which I think we just found it and then probably like three or four smaller plants for the shelf. That's um, done. We just walked in and we're like, too. boom, <laughs> that's what we're gonna do. I want to just come here and just take pictures. I know. <laughs> you should, honestly, we should. Ooh, these look like hanging plants. There's so many up here too. So cool, these look at really those. Cute. These are so pretty. Okay, so this is a fern. So this is a little bit more high maintenance of a plant. Um, the soil requires a lot more water than like every two weeks. So I probably wouldn't recommend getting a fern for a hanging plant if you don't want to be watering it a lot. Yeah, I feel like that would be a, a quite a it's difficulty. Us. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just some your first kind of intro yeah. into this. Yeah. You want to do yeah. something a little easier. I mean, they are pretty easy to take care of, but it's just, I don't have any ferns, if that tells you anything. <laughs> you're, you're like me too, we're on the shorter side. I, I feel like we would need like a step stool to like get up there all the time. Just so water. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, get the ladder out. <laughs> so whenever you come to a nursery, it can be so overwhelming. Like right now, I'm just like, where do I even begin? So yes. how can someone who's trying to do this for the first time get some new plants for their house? How does someone start whenever they're just getting into this? That's a great question. So I would say do your research before you even step foot in the nursery. So first you want to know what type of lighting situation is going to be in your room, which we kind of already talked right. about that. And then second, you want to know what plant is going to be best fit for that specific spot. Mm -hmm. So right now we know that the lighting in her room is like medium lighting. So we're looking for plants that can thrive 
in not a lot of light, but also, I mean, your room's not dark. So right. that's pretty much what we're looking for. Um, I already have plants in the back of my head that I know that I'm like on the hunt looking for. <laughs> You've already done um, the research. Yes, like exactly. The years, so. so I'll go over all the plants that we pick up today and talk about care and like what type of lighting those types of specific plants cool. need. So hopefully people can take this information and apply it to their own plant shopping needs. Okay, so this is a pothos plant and these are pretty much, I would say these are the easiest plants to take care of in regards to like not being a succulent, having leaves. These are so simple. They need water it's like- so cute too. Yeah, so, so cute. cute, I like it a lot. And they get oh, really they like droopy when they get big and these are beautiful. Okay, so this So this is a perfect, perfect fit yeah, for- this is the first I think this is our yeah, first one. We're gonna take home. <laughs> your first baby, congratulations. <laughs> A lot of these like look like great options, but again, guide us. These, in general, all of these plants, I would say, in this section, are generally pretty easy to take care of. So like, this, just say this plant and this plant are actually both pothos plants. This is a variegated pothos. So what variegated is, is like, it's missing chlorophyll in the leaves, so it has white spots in it. Oh, okay. So with variegated plants, you need more light because there's not chlorophyll in it so it, they brown easier versus these ones they absorb all the nutrients i didn't even well know that this. there were so many terms like yeah. this is the new day <laughs> variegated so you can sound all like fancy when your friends come over and be like <laughs> it's yeah. a pothos yeah <laughs> <laughs> they're like oh okay <laughs> what is this one this one's so beautiful that is also a pothos wow yeah so i like those the, yeah and they're so easy to take care of like I would say that like 50% of my plants are pothos. Obviously you want to take home the best one that you can. What are some things to look out for in an unhealthy plant? Um, I think browning on the leaves, um, yellowing leaves generally mean, like it doesn't, my plants get yellow leaves, I take them off. It, it, it happens, but if you can pick the healthiest leaf in the bunch or the healthiest plant in the bunch, that's probably the best way to go. So if leaves do start to brown or turn yellow, is the best thing to do just peel them off? Yes, so once a leaf gets a brown spot or a yellow spot, it never goes back to being green again. So if you want your, your plant to thrive, the best way to do is to take off the leaves that are dying because if you keep the leaves that are dying on, the plant will be putting its energy into keeping that leaf alive instead of putting its energy Ew, into yeah. making new plants or cool. making new leaves. Yeah. This is a prayer plant. Oh, that's so cute. Wait, I love that. It's really cute. That's so cool. <laughs> so these ones are super interesting. When they're in the dark, they actually perk up. And then when they're in the light, they go down a little bit more. So they kind of look like, they kind of always look like they need to be watered a little bit, but it's actually just the type of plant it is. Okay, so this is a snake plant and this plant thrives in pretty much all types of light other than direct light. So for anybody who has a really dark room um, or dark space that they want to put a plant, I highly recommend putting a snake plant. They're pretty simple, don't require a lot of water. And they look cute. They look cute, yeah, <laughs> and it kind of adds variety. So I think this is good on small plants. Perfect. We got a pretty cute little family going here. Such a happy little family. I know, look at this, so seriously. <laughs> we just gotta get some pots for them, grab that Monstera, and then we gotta pick out a hanging one. But after that, let's head back to your house and uh, get these guys settled. We have the rest of the babies safely. <laughs> they safely gonna look made it. So good. That one's already so cute. Oh, oh my gosh, so I love good. it. Your whole room is like just aesthetic <laughs> goals right now. Okay. So oh funny. my gosh. Okay. I want your wisdom on where we should place these. So let's place these on the shelves. What do you guys think? That's cute up there. It. Maybe this one because it's a little bit. It hangs a little bit right. longer. Put this one at the top. So I know that you just said to basically take the plant as it is and just pop it in the planter. Is that something you should always do or would you ever suggest like replanting it? Yeah, I think that it's honestly the easiest way to go. You know that this pot has really good drainage. Plants for healthy roots, you have to have good drainage. So drainage is just basically a hole at the bottom of your pot. 
as you can see, this only has one, and this has what? Multiple, Multiple <laughs> ones. So, I mean, this, this is fine, it does have a hole, but until this plant is too big for this pot, it's just simpler to just buy a pot, buy a plant, and just drop it in. Another thing that's great about this is you can just take this out and bring it to the sink and water it, oh and gosh, then yeah. you can just bring it back in and pop it in and then put it back in its so place. Easy. So easy. So I think this, what do you guys think? I love that. So cute. <laughs> so cute. So what do we do with So we do have an extra one. They need more light than like a pathos plant. So maybe putting this prayer plant by your window might might be a little bit better than this. Oh, thing. Do this? Okay. oh that's so cute, guys. Yeah, Why more? do plants just instantly make a room feel more lively and cozy? All right, Sterling, we've got the plants in your space. They look great. Now, Hannah, how does she take care of them? So, well, for starters, we already know that this, these types of plants are gonna thrive in your lighting situation. The only other thing that you really need to do is water them. Watering can be really tricky. It seems really simple, just, oh yeah, just water your plant when it needs water, but every plant is a little bit different. For me, I do, I water my plants pretty much all the same actually. Once every two weeks is good if you're watering the way I do, which I water more of like the soak method um, versus the little bit, you know, once a week method. So what I would do, if I were you, I would take this out of the pot, bring it to the sink, and just run the water through it for a good amount of time. And if it's really dry, I'll even soak it sometimes. So I'll fill up, I'll plug my sink, I'll fill up my sink, and then I just sit it in so it really can absorb the water. Now that's only if it's like, you haven't watered in like a month and it's looking really sad and wilted, but that's a little trick to bring, bring a plant that's really dehydrated back to life. But for the most part, if you just water every two weeks with the soaking method, these should be very happy here. Awesome. How do you avoid overwatering, even whenever you're doing it just once every two weeks? Right, when in doubt, water less. It's a lot easier to water dehydrated plant than to bring a plant back from root rot. So you definitely don't want to overwater. A good trick to know if you should water is to just stick your finger in the soil and feel if it's dry or if it's moist. So on Adulthood, we actually did an episode about being a dog parent, but I think at times being a plant parent can seem somehow more daunting. What are your tips for people who are just like Sterling, who are like, hey, I want to dive into this. I want to add some life to my space, but I'm yes. a little scared too. I think um, do your research, know your lighting in where you're going to be, where your plants are going to be, and then figure out what plants are going to thrive in that. And then figure out a good watering routine. Make sure that your plant has good drainage. And honestly, that it's as simple as that. It's so crazy cool. as it sounds. <laughs> so easy. I know. Yeah. I'm I should have done this years ago. Seriously, I feel like I'm gonna have to go say goodbye to some of my fake plants and be like, sorry guys, got some new friends moving in. Yes, <laughs> yes, new babies. I always like to think of my plants as like little creatures that are alive and they need to be nurtured and they need light and love, but really, I mean, you have I think to... that's why I feel so bad whenever I yes. they do die under my watch. Yes. They're living. So you just have to nurture them and figure out what care they need, and they'll live and they'll thrive. That's Amazing. Awesome. Hannah, thank you so oh, much good. for joining me. Thank you. so fun. I don't know about you, sir. Like, I'm feeling super inspired to actually be a plant mom. Oh yeah, I'm already you are in it. You're a plant mom officially. Like you're in it now. There's no going back now. So and it looks. I mean, this it adds so much to the space. It's amazing. Oh, yeah. Well, you guys, I think it's safe to say that we came, we saw, we adulted. Well, how do you guys feel? Do we feel our green thumbs coming into play? I don't know about you guys, but I actually feel a whole lot less stressed about plants, knowing that it's not as scary as I thought. Well, as always, let's wrap things up with a few of the things we learned in today's episode. Number one, use the original container the plant comes in for optimal drainage. I absolutely love this tip because I don't know about you, but the thought of repotting a whole plant absolutely terrifies me. Not only do you get to skip the process of repotting, but also it makes watering your plants a whole lot easier. Number two, do your research before heading to the nursery. 
Whenever you get to a nursery, it can be so overwhelming. You don't even know where to begin. If you're like me, you're like, is this an indoor plant or an outdoor plant? I'm not really sure. <laughs> So do your research before you arrive, know what you want, have a game plan, and if you need to, bring a picture or ask someone at the nursery for help. Number three, remove brown leaves. This is super easy. Hannah said you could even just pinch it off at times, but of course it's most effective to cut it off. I had no idea that the brown leaves will actually be taking a lot of energy from the rest of the plant to try to keep that little leaf alive. So it's easier just to go ahead and say goodbye so that the rest of the plant can thrive. Well everyone, I hope that you learned something new today. I know that I definitely did. I learned that houseplants are maybe not as intimidating as I thought. If you guys enjoyed today's episode, be sure to give us a little thumbs up and check us out on Instagram at weadulted. We'll see you guys next time. Genius.